In today's video, you are going to see a ton of transformations. If you are into watching furniture flips, thrift flips, trash to treasures, or high-end flips, then this video is definitely for you. And I would love it if you would consider hitting subscribe down below and watching my future projects that are coming up. I have a ton of really great content that is going to be coming soon and you're not going to want to miss that. If this video is a little too fast paced for you, I have the full length versions of each of these projects linked down below. Hey guys and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I have 10 flips for you guys. These range from thrift flips to curbside finds to actual dumpster finds. I think you're really gonna like them and let's get started with number one. Project number one is going to be a sad dining set that gets a farmhouse distressed new look. I got this dining set from a yard sale about a year ago or so and it has been sitting in my garage just waiting for the right home. <laughs> and I also just, I really couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it. It's a really strange set. But the first thing I do is I'm going to remove the seats and these seats were in really excellent condition. All I needed was some cleaning before recovering. And that is something that I do commonly on my channel where I reuse things and I just disinfect and clean them. The paint I'm going to be using is a semi-gloss enamel spray paint. Enamel spray paint comes in tons of different colors. So if you're not into the color scheme that I'm doing on this set, then there are endless possibilities that you could choose to do for your pieces. But enamel paint is extremely durable and it does not need to be sealed. Once it cures in about 30 days, it is rock solid. For the seats, I'm going to be using some fabric that I got from Joann's Fabric and I'm just stapling it on with my electric stapler. Distressing pieces is extremely easy. I just used some 220 grit sandpaper and distressed all of the edges and corners so that it looks like it's worn in the natural areas where it would get worn down. Here is the gray spray paint that I used for this. I used an Ace brand spray paint for the gray and I didn't really like it. So if I were you, I would just stick with Rust-Oleum. It's the best ever <laughs> for spray paint. And this gray color, I did the same distressed look on the chairs and I wanted it to pop against the table instead of being all white, but I didn't want it to be black and white. I wanted like a slight variation in color, not too stark of a difference. Also, the person that I made this for said that her kitchen was in gray and white, so I wanted to make sure that I made it match her style. Here it is, all staged in a farmhouse style. I thought it turned out so cute. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. And also, if you have any questions, you can ask them down below, or I will have a link in the description box to the full length version of this video. Number two was a curbside dresser that is going to be getting a very high end new look. Here's what it looks like right now, and you won't believe the transformation that it is going to get in this video. It is a maple color, and it had quite a bit of damage and cracks and just age showing on the piece. It had wheels underneath it, which I thought was really cool, and I wanted to go for a completely different and unexpected look for this piece. So I filled in all the holes and filled in all the cracks to get it ready for this new look that I was going to give it. And for the drawer handle holes, I just made sure to fill them in a little bit extra because it does kind of sink down in those holes. So that way you don't have to do too many layers of filler to fill those holes in nice and smooth and flat. I used a medium wood tone color stain for the top and for the rest of the piece, I'm going to be painting it in an almost black color. If you wanna know more about the products that I used, I will have the full length version of this video linked below where I discuss all of the products that are used in this video and how I use them. But I just mixed in a little bit of clear coat so that I wouldn't have to go back and seal the piece after painting it. And depending on how much you mix in can make it be more glossy or more matte. So I just did a very little bit compared to the amount of paint I used in order to get a more matte look on this piece.
Since I'm going for a totally different and high-end look on this, I wanted to put on a transfer. This image transfer is from Dixie Belle and I thought that it would look really neat with the color scheme that I was going for. I kind of wanted the piece to look like an old steamer trunk that you would see like on a ship, I don't know, like a nautical style steamer trunk. So I put on that nautical style transfer and then I just go ahead and seal over it with some satin clear coat. You're gonna wanna do like three coats if it's the top part of a piece of furniture that's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. And I applied it with a flat sponge. Next, I'm going to be adding some jewelry to the piece, which is this faux nail head trim. And I just aged it a little bit because remember, we're going for that old steamer trunk nautical style look. And once I got them all aged and dried, I cut them to size to fit each drawer front to make it look like there was a nail head trim on each drawer. And the way that I applied it was with some glue and I used hot glue from Surebonder. Surebonder's hot glue is the best quality in my opinion. And um, no, I'm not sponsored. I bought it with my own money. And for the handles, I'm going to be using leather straps and attaching them using screws and then covering those screws with that same faux nail head trim. Something that I didn't like about this piece was that you could see the wheels from the front underneath. And so I wanted to come up with a way to disguise those and also make the piece still look completely different from where we started. So I'm going to make a new base for this piece that is more streamlined and more flat. You wouldn't see these curves and things like that, the wood carvings that are on the bottom on a steamer trunk. So in order to keep going with that steamer trunk look, I wanted to be more straight lines and bulky and masculine looking base on here. And I stained it with the same exact stain as I did on the top and then put a clear coat over that as well. The last thing that I do is shine this piece up with some furniture polish of sorts. It is called Big Mama's Butter and it's from Dixie Belle. This is the final result. I love this piece. It is like one of my favorite pieces I have ever done and the pictures really don't do it justice. It was donated to a foster family. So usually I donate my pieces to kids who are aging out of foster care, but I have actually been running out of people who need the things that I'm getting rid of or giving away. So I have started donating to foster parents and their foster children. Number three is a cracked dresser that I turned into a gypsy cowgirl masterpiece. Now the front of this dresser had tons of cracks in the drawers and the top had a lot of staining and shadows that would not have looked good had I tried to restain it. So I'm going to use some wood filler to fill in those cracks and I'm also going to fill in the holes on the top two drawers because when I got this piece it was missing one piece of hardware. So when I, whenever that happens I like to just change the top two hardwares to match and then leave the original on all the rest of the drawers. This dresser went to a good friend of mine who has been working in special education for a very long time. That's actually how we met because we both worked together in special education a couple years ago. And she picked out this color which was called the Gulf and it is from Dixie Belle and it is a beautiful color. I loved how it looked. It's not something that I would usually pick for my own home but she is from Louisiana and the Florida area and I figured that the Gulf is the perfect name for a color that she would pick. I don't even think she realized that. But it's just something that you would see in that area. And the style that I'm going with this, the reason I called it Gypsy Cowgirl is because it reminded me a lot of these ladies called the Junk Gypsies, which are Texas-based flippers. And they had a show on HDTV for a while. And if you saw it, let me know in the comments down below. But if not, then I will just explain that their style was very eclectic like this, very gypsy and cowgirl at the same time. Then I'm just going to paint everything except for like the frame of this dresser so that some of the wood can still come through because that wood tone is super beautiful. And I'm just hand sanding all of that wood filler that I did and then wiping the dust off before painting the drawers.
the hardware was really gross and dirty, so I'm using something called Super Clean to clean them. This is something that you can find at any automotive store, or Walmart has it, or like hardware stores like that. It's a really strong cleaner, but it's biodegradable, which I like about it. Here's how they look. It even took the shine off of them. That's how clean they are. But I'm going to be painting them in a flat white, and you will see why, because the other handles here are going on the top, and I loved how they looked already. They went with that gypsy cowgirl style that I was going for, and it helped to lighten up the piece because the room that it's going in is going to be bright and yellow and colorful, and there are some spots on here that need to be sanded before I put the clear coat on. As you saw, there was like a weird white blemish on the side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sand the whole thing to get rid of any brush strokes that you can see before I put on my clear coat, which is just a satin clear coat by Dixie Bell. And I'm just going to use a synthetic brush to do this because it'll help leave less brush marks. I could have used the sponge that you saw me use earlier for the top, but for the sides and with all those different curves and um, inlays and things like that the sponge would have left a little bit excess on there so i just wanted to go ahead and use a brush on the whole thing to control the clear coat a little bit better Here is the dresser finished in all its glory and I staged it with a Texas cowgirl theme look and since the room that it's going is going to be yellow I thought I would stage it for her with some bright happy yellow sunflowers. It is so cute and I wish that I could have this kind of style in my home. It is so much fun and when you look at it you just want to smile. Number four, a dumpster find gets new purpose. This old display cabinet was found in a dumpster. A friend of mine saw it, sent me a picture and said, do you think you could fix this? And she brought it to my house for me and everything. It could not have been any better that how it worked out, but it really needed some repair. And I can see why somebody would think that they would need to throw this away because that curved glass is really hard to find and very expensive to replace. And since it was missing that curved glass, missing the door, missing the drawers, I could see why somebody would think that this is beyond being reused. But if you look at pieces like this in a way to where you're not going to use it for its original purpose and give it a brand new purpose, then yes, it can totally be reused and it had great bones. So I'm just removing all the frame areas of the glass so that way there is no sharp tacks, nails, or pieces of wood coming out. And <laughs> these were a little bit hard to get out. I should have used the treble to cut those little nails. But there was a huge crack along the side that I filled with some wood glue and clamped together and let it dry and it came back together like a dream. And the next thing that I'm going to do is hang some wood pieces across the back because I'm turning this piece into a hall tree. Remember, I said sometimes you have to re-envision something when its original purpose is no longer an option. My two-year-old had to get in on it, of course. Now I'm just going to restain it in the same color that it already was. It was like a honey oak color, and I wanted to just bring out that wood grain because it really was beautiful, and the wood in general was in beautiful condition. Now I'm going to be painting it with a color called Palmetto by Dixie Belle, and I wanted it to have a more botanical look but in the end, it kind of had more of a rustic green and wood look, which still was absolutely beautiful. This piece I sold to a friend of mine, and a long time ago, I did a desk flip where it had a beautiful inlay inside the wood of the top of the desk. If you remember that desk flip, comment down below because she gave me that desk as well, and I fixed it up and surprised her with it afterwards. 
Now I'm just going to clear coat it because this type of paint does need a clear coat and I'm spraying it on using an HBLP sprayer and an air compressor and then I got these hooks from Target and I'm just going to hang them on those wood pieces that we put inside for strength. The finished product was adorable. I wish I could have kept this piece, I just didn't have the room for it. And it makes me really happy to know that the person who bought it from me is really loving it. She thought it was amazing and came and got it right away. So when somebody loves my work like that, that's really the reward for me. And, and that's what makes me want to keep doing it, is just bringing that happiness to somebody using something that was literally thrown in the garbage and was heading to the dump. So making people happy and saving the planet. <laughs> Number five, an armoire is given new cottage core vibes. So once people found out that I was doing these flips to give to kids that were aging out of foster care, people in my neighborhood and all over my town started reaching out to me to donate furniture pieces to me. And this piece was something that came to me in that way. So they knew my purpose and wanted to help out. So they donated this armoire to me and it was really a weird armoire. I'm not gonna lie. It was made out of foam on the doors, foam. Yeah, you heard me right. <laughs> I have never seen this before, and I've seen a lot of weird stuff in all my years of flipping furniture. But since it was foam, I ended up cracking it when I was re-screwing the doors back in, and it was kind of a pain in the butt, but I just used some JB Weld glue to glue it all back together. Thankfully, glue and foam work well together. <laughs> See, it broke again. Oh my gosh, this was so frustrating but I just super glued this part back on to help get the project rolling. Sometimes when a piece has a lot of detail on it, it makes it really hard to clean. So this is when I bust out my <laughs> drill and this set of brushes that I got off Amazon and that gets in all the nooks and crannies and I sprayed it down with just some soapy water. Since I'm painting this, I'm not concerned about getting any kind of damage to the finish of that wood look. I would say wood look because remember, it is made of foam. <laughs> the colors that I'm choosing are just leftover paints. One of them was a clearance paint that was like a light, light, light pink color and the other one was a kind of teal chalk paint and I'm going to mix them together. You can mix paints together as long as they have the same base. So if they are water-based, you can mix them together. If they are oil-based, you can mix them together. But do not mix oil and water-based because it will not work, they will separate. And I just kept mixing, mixing, mixing until I got the right color that I was going for. The girl that this went to was a young adult that aged out of foster care and she was really into the cottage core look. If you haven't heard of cottage core, Google it and you will be amazed. It is adorable, super cute. It's like a whole new look, like kind of similar to shabby chic, but more about plants and just being in a cottage in general. <laughs> and the light blue color was just gorgeous. It was such a happy color. And I decided that it was kind of bland just being all one color. And so I eventually came up with the idea to whitewash over it using a white wax, which is way easier than doing white washes because you just apply it with the brush and then wipe off any spots. It's so easy to do. And the brand I'm using is called Rewax, and I also have that linked in my Amazon store down below if you want to try it out. For a little bit of added whimsy, I decided to do the edges of all the drawers in a gold and I thought that it would be a nice surprise when somebody opens a drawer and they see that gold popping through. And then I also had these clearance little sticker things that I got from Walmart a long time ago and I've just been waiting for the right piece to use it on. And this was my first time doing any look like this so it was not 100% perfect but it was still really fun and I love that when the person who owns this opens these doors up it will be a beautiful little garden scene inside. Here it is finished. I love that whitewash blue and you can see the gold peeking through in the door frames there. It's just so whimsical and happy and vibrant and fun. Number six is a shabby chic thrifted lamp makeover. I got this from Goodwill. I think I spent just a few dollars on it. Somebody had tried to sell it for 20 and I spent um, 
half of $5.99, so about $3. And it was a brass color. The shape of it, though, was beautiful, and that lampshade was in excellent condition. I thought it would go really well with that cottage cord look that I did on the previous piece. So this lamp, as well as the next project that I'm going to show you, and the armoire all went to the same person. And I am just decoupaging on some random tissue paper. The color does not matter because I'm going to be painting it to match the armoire. But this gives it a neat texture that makes it just a little more whimsy and fun compared to this faux brass color like screaming gold at you. <laughs> When using spray paint or spraying paint with a paint sprayer on lamps, I just stick a cotton ball down inside the area where the light bulb plugs in to keep that part safe from the paint and then I spray the entire piece all in that color. This is the same exact blue color and it was awesome because then I could help use up the rest of that paint that I had used on the armoire and I did the same exact white wax finish as I did on the armoire. So they really went together. Even though they were completely different styles, now they go well together and it tells kind of a neat story of things that are accumulated over time and reused, much like the cottage core style lights to show. Number seven is an outdated piece of art that gets the simple new cottage style. So this piece of art I actually bought on vacation in Houston so many years ago, like 10 years ago. And I got it at a yard sale for about 20 bucks. And I'm just going to update it to match that same cottage core style, which is more light and airy. And so instead of painting over the painting, I'm going to preserve that painting inside there by just stapling over a floral fabric onto the canvas and then putting it right back into the frame. You can do this with literally any art that is on a canvas. It's so easy to staple fabric over a canvas and there are fabrics out there that look like paintings that are gorgeous. So if you wanna try this, it's really like a five minute flip that you can do in any style. And this is how it all turned out. I love this gold compared to the brass of that lamp before. Number eight is a broken side table that gets new floral details. This came to me from a friend of mine. She bought it at Goodwill and she didn't have time to flip it, so she dropped it off to me to use for a donation to those in need. So that is where this table ended up going. This table, as well as the other two tables that come after this, were all donated to young adults that have aged out of foster care. The paint I used on this was Annie Sloan. It had a little bit of rust around the lid and the rust kind of crumbled and fell into the paint, which then turned into stains that I will show you. And I just used some shellac to cover up those stains. You just spray on the spray shellac on the stained areas and then you can paint right over it. And so I just went over it with a white paint and made it look like those stains had never happened. For the floral look, I'm going to be using some a few different colored paints and a stencil and a stencil brush to put on the floral accent. I went with green, some pinks, and like a little bit of a red pearl. And I wanted it to be very cottagey. The girl that wanted this piece and another piece that you'll see next, um, she was really into, I think she called it like plant princess or something like that. That was her style that she liked, which I thought was so neat and very original. Never heard that style before, which is really cool. And so I tried to go along with that kind of princessy, but also still plant related vibe. <laughs> now, the next one is the simple trash to treasure table. This was a trashed table. It was super wobbly and everything was chipping. It was just a hot mess. And I made it into a table that would match the table that you just saw me do. So I'm doing a very similar look on this table as the other one using a similar stencil and color and everything like that. But at first I had a lot of repairs to make to this table. So I needed to do a lot of wood filler, and lots of sanding and lots of new screws to keep it from wobbling.
On this piece, I changed the type of paint that I was using since that other paint had the rust in it, and I went with a Snow White milk paint from General Finishes. This paint was actually gifted to me from one of my viewers, and if you're watching, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I have to say that this paint was really awesome. It has the most beautiful, soft finish you've ever seen on a paint. And it's not the type of milk paint that chips. It has actually a really durable surface that you don't have to seal, which was awesome too. I did the same exact stenciling like, process on here. I just used a different shaped stencil for this table. And it turned out super duper cute. Went along great with the other one. And now she has matching side tables. Number 10 is a water damage side table that gets a wonderful restoration. I say restoration because I only painted where I had to. And there was a little bit of damage where a piece, a little molding had come, come off of it. And so I just glued that back on. And once that was glued back on, I could go ahead and start sanding that water damage on the top. And I am very sad to admit that I'm the one who water damaged it. Usually I'm much better about taking care of these older pieces, but I had a plant sitting on here and it didn't have like, it had a little dish under it. And I thought that that would save it from any water touching this table, but somehow, moisture got in there and just totally destroyed that top. So instead of sanding and sanding and sanding just to find a stain that won't come out, I decided to paint the top in black. And the girl who got this side table had furniture that was in that red, cherry, wood, and black. So I thought that would match really, really well with the theme that she had going on. And then I just clear coated over the black paint that I used. I did a few coats of clear coat, although I'll only show you one. And then for the rest of the piece, I just restored the stain on here using Restore Finish in a dark walnut color. I prefer to use dark Restore Finish over all the pieces that I use Restore Finish on just because it really fills in any imperfections really well when it's darker. This one is one of those ones where you just had to see it in person. It was so gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of the red tone woods, but this turned out just absolutely stunning. I loved it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. And if you wanna see more of the projects that I've done, then click this video right here.